quite excited to have our fourth webinar and in fact everybody on board. Uh, just a note, we will be recording this one and then putting it on point drive and sending you the link to that. So if you don't feel like taking notes and you would like to review again, well, then you can do that. So just a quick bit about Turn Left. We are the um, exclusive sales partners for LinkedIn Marketing Solutions in Sub-Sahara Africa. Uh, very proud to be. We've been working with LinkedIn for some time now. And um, Turn Left Media has been around for, for two years, but Marius, myself, and Samantha have been working with LinkedIn for a lot longer. In fact, Marius almost 10 years and Sam eight. So we've got a lot of experience on, on the brand and the channel, and you know we're highly passionate about it. And LinkedIn is, is big business. So you know we talk about over 540 million members on the platform. That's the oldest social media platform, and it's the one that just keeps on growing and growing. And just to put that in context to Africa, which we obviously all interested in here today, Africa's numbers are almost at 30 million. Which is, which is a huge amount and keeps growing. South Africa making up almost uh, 6.8 million, Kenya close to 2 million, Nigeria closer to 4 million. So it's a platform that is growing and it's a platform that's becoming more and more important for the professional network. And I bring up the professional network because you know, often we throw all social media channels into one pile, but LinkedIn is quite different and unique to the others in the sense that it is more of a professional network. And as a result of that, you know, we've got to be careful about cut and pasting, you know, our social media communication from various social media channels together. Because this type of environment, the conversation and the, and the relevancy of the, of, the, of, the, um, of the content that we're sharing needs to be exposed to the audience correctly. But today we're going to be talking about, you know, video and we're going to be talking about carousel ads because we want, to, want you guys to get get that dead right when you're going forward to make sure that you, you learn from the best practices that are out there. Because arguably LinkedIn is the best B2B channel and the best professional network to, to get your brand exposed to and your communication objectives met. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Marius who's going to really dig deep into the video side. We're excited. Video has just been launched about two months old now, native video. And he's going to take you through some of the best practices there and hopefully you'll walk away with some real nuggets that you can use from a day-to-day -day basis. So over to you. Uh, Morris has got over 10 years experience on the platform and Sammy, who will move into the carousel ads section are, as head of our product, she will take you through carousel ads and then we'll have a wrap up, some Q&A and uh, yeah, I'll take it from there. So thanks, enjoy it and thank you for making the time. Hey everybody, thank you very much for joining us. And um, again, apologies around uh, the, the link mix up. Hopefully we uh, solve that by giving you guys some really great content today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the state of B2B video. We'll delve into some audience understanding and the role that that video specifically plays on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn recently has gone all in on video. So it's really a lot of what we talk about. We'll tell you some of the, the intricacies on getting started on video. Um, we've just released the video gallery of greatness where I've handpicked five specific themes of best practices that I wanna share. We'll show you a few case studies and then we'll do a quick wrap up before Sammy takes over. So just quickly delving into video a little bit more um, and starting at the, the state of player video, we know that in the next three years, video is predicted to be 80% of total web traffic. And it's not only just down to brand investment, but around human behavior as well. So for instance, we know that, that mobile is a really prominent device and video suits it perfectly. Um, and with the potential reduction in data costs and with the improvement in connectivity, we're going to see a massive upswing in this usage. But video is also about the human, um, the human element and this emotional link. We can release endorphins and feel good when we're watching video. Um, and it's obviously a lot more than just static images. But LinkedIn's done a lot of research around, you know, top challenges to, to video advertising. And globally, the answers that came out remain the same. So generally, there is obviously this cost associated with video and the time consuming nature of it but it's also about reaching the right audiences and the right content to make the investment into video and into native video um, relevant to people. 
I think it's a big opportunity for us in the way that, that mobile has developed where video is not just about these massive productions anymore, but it's the ability to take our handheld devices and have communication and have connections with people um, you know, at every moment throughout the day. And obviously there's a few other reasons as well. So you know, the ability to measure results, the publishers and the platforms, the expertise in video creation, but as we move more into this millennial space where video has become part of the defunct um, you know, mode of communication, we're seeing this grow. So it's interesting that when B2B marketers look at the purposes of videos, um, generally you see there's no clear outlier. So video really is a big um, versatile format which can serve multiple purposes from explaining complex products or services providing really amazing storytelling, and then obviously driving high vol volumes and quality um, and quantities of leads. So when we think about the video formats that drive better engagement, we generally see from Nielsen's, not from LinkedIn itself, when we aggregate video campaigns, they generally conclude that native formats, so things that are in the feed, stories tend to have better impacts and better engagement. In this case, it generally drives about an 82% brand lift, which is not really that surprising considering that um, pre-roll videos are generally seen as disruptive, where native video is generally seen as much more engaging and less intrusive. But it's specifically around B2B video, you know, trust and credibility in the feed is earned. So if we think about the, the emotive aspect to B2B decision making, um, I always use this example of, you know, buying a pair of shoes. So if we buy a pair of shoes and they're not relevant or they don't fit, then we throw them in the back of the cupboard, we return them, um, or we give them to somebody else. But from a B2B perspective, making these big decisions, whether you invest in a new IT system, whether you switch your bank or your carrier, has big repercussions, both for your business and for you and in your professional career. So we generally spend more time researching and more time building up the trust and credibility of brands um, to know that we can invest in this. And we know that trust in general is at an all-time low, specifically across digital and across social media, the likes of Cambridge Analytica, the political turmoil in the US um, affecting how social media and how digital is perceived. And this obviously affects our industry quite heavily. So when we look at social platforms um, in general, you know, we don't intend to demean other networks, but LinkedIn is generally seen as twice, as twice as trusted as other social platforms. And it's down to three things. So firstly, it's around the mindset of the user when they're on the platform. Because I'm there as an individual, as a professional, rather than in my personal capacity, I take a few seconds more to think about the conversations that I have on the platform, the way that I engage, but I'm also there in a business in a business perspective. So I'm thinking about how do I create connections between my business and my potential clients. And because of that, there is a higher level of trust in this authentic brand safe environment. And then lastly, it's also about the ability for our brands to reach and impact the right customers across the across the, the sales funnel. So if we think about our audience, I think our biggest challenge is always to understand and engage with the right audience um, to our brand. So there's a few ways that marketers get to know their audiences. So we can do that through social media and the analytics we derive from our own um, assets. So obviously competitor analysis, the feedback we get from our employees, keyword research, but specifically around our websites as well. And we know that through digital website remarketing is becoming a more and more effective and valuable tool for us to understand and engage our clients both holistically as they engage on our website and our, on our own platforms, but also then again within other, within other spaces through other publishers. But generally we see that there isn't a lot of information around who the people are that visit our website. So Facebook provides us with a lot of behavioral information and we can derive some insights from that. Google provides us with um, information such as who visits our website, how long they visit, where they come from. Um, and LinkedIn wants to layer another level of information on top of this. 
So we have this ability to identify our website visitors through something called the LinkedIn Insights tag. Once it's placed on our website, we can actually go and we can look at everybody who's visited your website from LinkedIn, both through an owned perspective and a paid perspective. So everybody who visits our website organically, um, that user is then obviously cookied and we pull in their information from LinkedIn and we can see on a anonymized basis who are the people that visit your website in terms of the industries, their job functions, their seniorities, most of the demographic information. And we can actually segment that per section of your website. So if you're a bank, for example, and you have information around your personal banking versus business banking, then we can differentiate out what are the key differences between people that visit personal banking versus business banking, or who are the people that are generally more interested in my loyalty programs, um, or people that have checked out specific products. So this allows us then to identify the people that visit our websites for free, but it also allows us to then remarket to those people. And we can then be quite clever in how we segment our remarketing capabilities. So that's using some of our owned data. But what we can then do is we can marry that with LinkedIn's um, targeting capabilities as well. So this is definitely the thing that we always talk about in LinkedIn's USPs is this ability to use you know, over 18 variables to define who the people are that we want to speak to, whether it's from the companies, their job titles, their senioritys, their years of experience or where they've studied. We can use all of these different fields of, of um, targeting to build up our personas and get a better understanding around who they are. We can also, quite recently, start taking your own data um, and using that in an anonymized way. So, for example, if you're a business um, and you're in the, the tourism or the hospitality industry, you generally have a list of companies in which you have trade agreements or you have preferential rates. So you can go and you can pull in those businesses through account-based marketing, find those individuals, on, find those businesses on LinkedIn, and then you can layer LinkedIn's additional targeting on top of that. So imagine if you've got a list of 300 businesses that you curate as existing clients. You can then layer seniority or job function um, on top of that to only reach the procurement department or the marketing department or the business decision makers. Or you can identify from a personal to business perspective, you can identify your existing clients in which you have business relationships, and then you can offer the individuals within those businesses personalized and personalized services as well. Or if you've got a list of email addresses from your marketing campaigns or from your promotions, you can pull those, you can pull those audiences in as well, um, either through your CRM system or by doing a CSV upload. All of this is directly handled by you, the client, so there's no, there's no third party involvement um, or no opportunities for the data to go amiss and all the data is hashed. So when we think about the role of, of video on LinkedIn, we've seen it evolve quite significantly over the last while. So about a year ago, LinkedIn introduced native video first, um, and it's gone through a couple of different guises since then. So first, it was the ability to post video on my personal platform, and we've seen some really innovative ways that people have started developing both personal brands on LinkedIn using this video, We've seen some tech shows starting up, utilizing people's personal spaces. Um, we've seen brands using this quite effectively. So, you know, a chief economist would be at a, um, at a conference, for example, and at the end of the day, they would take a five minute video that would wrap up the thoughts for the day around what was happening at the show, or people would get a behind the scenes peek at what was happening at conferences or what is happening in factories. And all of that has led to video being shared 20 times more than any type of content across LinkedIn. And what we've seen during the beta period that ended on the 12th of, 12th of June is that over 700 of these advertisers experimented with video. So in general, we've seen a significant lift in terms of performance, engagement, um, and general brand lift as well across a wide variety of um, of clients and verticals. 
So just talking about some of the primary features around these videos, you can obviously buy it the way that you want. So you can buy it in a CPM, CPC, or cost per view. You can choose to upload the video either natively onto your company page, or you can load it directly into, into Campaign Manager, and you can we can run it in, in different ways from there. And then you can choose to sponsor the video either as a native video or we can do A B testing. Sorry, I think somebody isn't isn't muted. Let's quickly just solve that problem. While you're solving that problem, Boris, um, just everybody, there is a little chat section on on the platform here. If you want to ask questions for later on, please go ahead and drop them into the chat uh, the chat box there, please. Thanks. Sorry, Boris. Perfect. So you can use the, the video in, in several different ways. So you can obviously use it as a traffic driver, so people can consume the video, um, and then we can send them to another location. We can use it from a video view perspective as well. So if the primary objective is just to expose individuals to the video, then you can do that. Or you can use it as a lead generation tool. And then from a measurement perspective, we've got the full ombud. So looking at video completion rates per quantile, um, completed views, and based off of that, we can then actually look at the demographics as well. So we can understand down to, down to the demographic level, who are the people that are engaging within the video and how do we use those, those video metrics to optimize the process. So don't forget, you can run anything from three seconds to 30 minutes. Um, and what's interesting, which is unique from, from LinkedIn, is that in general, um, sorry guys, just please make sure that you're muted. Um, we generally see on LinkedIn that the completion rate and the engagement rate doesn't significantly drop off, you know, anywhere sort of up to a five or a 10 minute, 10 minute perspective. Because people are there from a B2B perspective, they generally are more happy to engage in longer form content as long as it's valuable. So for the moment, only horizontal videos, we can load anywhere up to 200 megs, less than 30 frames per, per second um, with lots of different, uh, different audio formats. So how can members interact with our format? Firstly, through the introductory text. So Please note, unlike normal sponsored content, the URL doesn't actually appear in the intro video. So the moment we load the video, it generates, um, it generates the preview and members can engage either through the preview or through the, the bottom text. There's obviously the play button. So videos automatically start playing as soon as 50% of the video is visible in the feed. So most of the, the members never actually see the play button unless they pause the video. On desktop, once a video, once a member has engaged in the actual video and they start scrolling through the feed, the video opens up as a miniaturized version on the left-hand side of the feed so people can still watch the video as they scroll through the feed. Oh, you obviously- stop you there. Yeah? For a second, um, I don't know if your slideshow is moving there, just to to be aware. Um, I think we might be stuck on one of your slides. I'm not seeing your slides. We haven't moved off the uh, leverage your own data slide. Well, that's beautiful. Um, I'm just going to quickly leave and join again and just try and see. Sorry about that, folks. We just loaded up any second now. Back on in a a sec, Boris will be back here. We just want to make sure you can see the slides that are there. Um, in the meantime, just make sure you're on mute on the other side, and we will be back in. Um, I'll just wait for him. In the meantime, I'll put up some of those slides. Uh, here comes Boris again. Perfect. Can everybody see my screen? All good now. Thanks, Boris. Excellent. Okay, so just taking a few steps back. So you can buy it on a CPM, CPC, or cost per view. 
we can either upload it directly onto your company page where we can sponsor it, or you can load it um, into the campaign manager. You can use it in three different ways to drive traffic to a particular location, to get video views if that's the primary objective, or to collect leads. And then from a measurement perspective, we can look at your completion rate, your quantile view. So that means if somebody's watched it 25% of the way, 50% of the way, completion rates, and then obviously watch your cost per view. And then we can get demographics around the people that have engaged with the video as well. And then we were talking about the video length. So anywhere between three seconds to 30 minutes and people normally on LinkedIn are more likely to engage with you know, longer form video than general um, and generally horizontal video. So then we spoke about the way that members interact. So firstly, it's through the introductory text, through the video itself. And then we were talking about the ad head headline as itself, and that should describe the contents of the video. And then finally, it's the call to action button as well. So if you're using lead generation forms, then the call to action button won't drive people anywhere else. The lead gen form will, op will open and that's pre-populated with the member's details. So if we think about how do we want to get started, we need to think about the success metrics that are relevant to our audience and to where we want to position the, the campaign. So from a LinkedIn perspective, we think about the click to site and the dwell time, what, quit, what quantile view people are engaging in, the completion rate, and then increase brand sentiment. And what we can generally provide you with is some idea around where people are engaging in terms of video views and how your video views are performing against your particular vertical. Then there's obviously the, the more, the more performance-driven views. So have we increased company page followers or engagers? What's the cost per lead or the cost per, per qualified lead? And from a client perspective, you know, our customer spend and average deal size, the lifetime and churn. So if we think about some of the additional features, then obviously we can track and optimize um, our performance based on conversion tracking and conversion tracking is directly tied into our insights tag. We can capture these quality leads using our LinkedIn lead generation forms that are pre-filled in with their data and that can either be uh, synced to a CRM system or you've got it available as a CSV download um, at any point. So just some of the best practices that we've seen from a video perspective, um, LinkedIn has just released a new, uh, a new piece of information called the Video Ad Gallery of great Greatness. Um, and there are 10 sort of lessons that we can take from this. I'm gonna share just five general ones. So the first one is just think about, think about your movie as a silent film director. So a large portion of our audience is going to engage with your video without you know, clicking on it or playing it full screen. So consider adding subtitles. For the moment, you have to natively load your subtitles onto the video, but pretty soon within the next few months, you'll be able to upload your subtitles as a separate file and the two will be synced. So Amazon did this quite, um, quite nicely where they created this aspirational video that served as a really nice brand awareness, if, brand awareness engagement. The second tip is show the, the most important parts of your video as early as possible. Um, you know, viewer attention rates generally tend to drop quite quickly. So you wanna make sure that you get your brand message across as soon as possible. So Pinterest for, for business shows rather than tells, so they utilize this video and make sure they get the brand message across pretty soon within the, the video. This is a really important one. So we always, whenever we sit down with customers, we talk about thought leadership and how important thought leadership is within our business. And generally, thought leadership rests within the executives across the across the business. You know, and asking an executive to write a long form post, whether it's 500 or a thousand words, 
generally is, is met with a lot of skepticism because nobody has time. So where we've seen some amazing, um, amazing results is where we've switched this thought leadership onto a video perspective. So not only are you humanizing the brand, you're cutting down on the production time that it takes for, um, for your executives to, to take part in these exercises. So rather than writing a video, you can set up um, you can set up some video time with your executives where you can ask them 10 or 20 questions and you can cut those questions down into into more manageable segments or you can ask your executives to start thinking about capturing video as they're on the move so when they're attending conferences <coughs> on the commute to and from work or just whenever inspiration strikes them take out your phone have a five second conversation, five minute conversation, and then send your, send your video to your team. You can share behind the scenes um, and product demos. So video is really this amazing ability for us to tell a big story in a very short amount of time. So Boeing, for example, used this quite effectively to show a behind the scenes video on how their, um, their latest inventions is actually being produced. And then lastly, highlight customer testimonials and case studies. So really utilize this ability for us to tell rich, engaging stories in a very short amount of time. So think about <coughs> all of the abilities you have to layer all of these videos together. But don't just take my word for it. We're gonna quickly talk about one example around Audi and what they've done to be more productive and, and uh, effective. Just check your sound, Marius. Yes, uh, I don't think we're getting sound coming through yet. You're not. Apologies for that, guys. Um, when the technology gremlins get in, they really do take a lot of time. So I'll, I'll just talk through Audi, for example. So Audi wanted to use sponsored videos to really talk about the brand perception and the brand shift to chauffeurs, which is a very unique audience, and to senior level executives. Um, and they're really focused on providing a unique experience. So rather than using static imagery, they utilized video which offered individuals this immersive experience into the totality of what the driving behavior from a chauffeur perspective and navigation, safety to an executive comfort level provided. So what's interesting is, you know, completion rates dropped um, about, you know, above two minutes. So make sure that you establish your brand message quite early in the process. From a lead generation perspective, KLM focused on telling a story um, and utilizing their own staff um, to start driving social action and driving engagement. So they also used video across the full funnel. So higher up in the funnel for awareness and consideration, they showcase some of the opportunities that um, that KLM had to drive awareness. And then low down in the funnel, they used video to drive specific destination related content. 
And then lastly, around demand generation from a Microsoft perspective, um, it was really used quite heavily for event signups. So just around building awareness, showcasing both the speakers um, at specific events, um, but also giving people a feel for what the events would, would entail. So just a quick wrap up, sort of three key takeaways. The first one is on focusing on producing relevant content and thinking about people at, at the right time and at the right process. So how do we get this brand message across? The second one is test the variety of videos. So just, don't just assume that we can reproduce what we see on our TV onto on TVC onto LinkedIn. Um, think about what the opportunities are from a thought leadership and social leadership perspective, um, showcasing your products and services, um, you know, giving people the opportunity to engage in customer testimonials, length, depth, um, look at where the, the opportunities lie. And then always think about the metrics for success. So how do we define the goal through each of the, each of the sales funnels and for the buyer? and make sure that we align the goals effectively. So just looking at the future. So within this quarter, we're gonna start adding subtitle uploads onto direct sponsored content. So the ability to post dark posts. In Q4, we'll start reporting on audio metrics. So how many people listen to your video with a sound on, a sound, sound on and sound off. Um, and then within the first six months of next year, so sort of Q1, Q2, we're gonna start integrating additional video formats. So the ability to showcase square or horizontal formats. Are there any particular questions at this time? It sounds like no. So we'll move on to Sammy and then I think uh, we'll, we'll, ask, we'll leave some questions for the end, but um, just a reminder, folks, just pop in those questions into the chat section. Feel there free are to two ask questions in the questions. chat. Okay, all right. Let's maybe quickly address those. Yeah, so first two, um, so this is from Carla. So just talking about the fact that if you, if you want us to run video campaigns for your clients um, in general, uh, whether it's through through self service or through through our managed services, you need to make sure that you have admin access to the client's company page in order to to sponsor or amplify the video posts. So if you're an agency and you're, and you're running on behalf of the client, or if we're running it for you, just it's a it's a very important part. Make sure that you have um, that you have client access. And then from Tammy, we have specs for the video. So Tammy, at the end of this session, we will send you um, the complete spec breakdown. But just to very quickly recap, so it's anywhere from three seconds to 30 minutes. Horizontal videos at the moment only. Um, file sizes up to 200 megs and file format MP4. Less than 30 frames per second um, and audio format mpeg4 and then aspect ratio 4 to 3 or 16 to 9 so generally what we see on uh, televisions as well but like i said we'll send you all of the all of the formats in a link um, at the end of the session as well all right thanks boris while you set up sam um just checking if there are any more questions when will it be when will this be rolled out uh the pay-per-view So at the moment, it's already available. So LinkedIn is very much focused on objective-based targeting. So depending on what your objective is that we set at the beginning of the campaign. So if it's awareness or lead generation, then it's priced on a CPC or a, a CPM pricing at the moment. If, it's, um, if your main objective is to drive video views, then you can set it on a cost per view. Great, let's set up. Um, I'm gonna hand over now to Samantha Olafir. She's our head of product here at Turn Left and uh, Sam's been working on LinkedIn for us said almost uh, eight years now. So he's well entrenched in the product, knows it 
like the back of her hand. So, Sammy, without further ado, let's get you started. Thanks, John. Um, not having a great technical day here. Marius, can you just carry on with the slides and I'll just instruct when the next slide is due, just because I'm struggling to share. I'm just quickly switching it back on. So the carousel portion is a little bit shorter. So we should end promptly at three. Great. So we are really excited about the recent launch of carousel ads. And Marius, if we can go to the first slide. I think to kick things off, it's important to know that the main goal of the Carousel ad is to really help brands tell interactive stories that inspire their target market to take action. So we see this in the way that the ad allows you to tell a complete, very rich brand story. Um, the ads command the attention of the audience and ultimately help you drive results towards your business goals. So looking at the next slide, the great thing about the carousel ads that I absolutely love is that it gives you a lot more space. There's up to 10 swipeable, customizable cards, which I will show you shortly. Um, but this flexibility really helps you get creative with the visuals and again, commands this attention from your audience. From the few that we've already run, this really interactive component, I think, encourages users to engage with the content in a completely different way. And because of this, brands are able to drive results, send traffic to multiple landing pages, and create meaningful impressions of the brand using this ad. So on the next slide, you're going to see an animated example that demonstrates the swipeable behavior of the carousel ads. A little bit slow, but you can get the gist of how it works. And I'm going to show you some live examples a little bit later. But moving on to how you um, can use carousel ads. I think this is one of the most common questions we get around carousel ads. Um, and it really depends on what your marketing objectives are. But we wanted to share a couple of examples of carousel content that we've seen work really well so far. So we typically see four main uses for carousel ads. Firstly, advertisers tell a rich story about their brand. So whether it's sharing highlights about the company or telling the, a brand narrative, we also see marketers showcasing multiple products and painting a much fuller picture of their brand's offering. And then further to this, they could also feature a single product at a more in-depth level which allows the audience to obviously learn more about that specific product. And then finally, we've also seen brands share relevant industry insights and opportunities. Sorry, can we just all mute? I'm so sorry, Marius, if you don't mind muting everyone. Yeah, basically what we need are good comments towards the month of July. Celia, would you would you mind just muting yourself? Great, I think that's been done. Right, looking at the next slide, um, I think another important point to note is that um, there's useful a carousel ad at each stage of the marketing funnel. So if we look at the upper end of the funnel, we typically see advertisers wanting to tell that rich story about their brand, you know, establish themselves as a thought leader in the industry. And this is a really great way to get member, um, members to engage and just raise overall awareness of your brand. And then lower down the funnel, if you're ready to convert your customer, you can try generating leads with the carousel ads by bringing your products to life or even utilizing that lead gen form. So we also have some suggestions around our best practices, you know, what we've seen work best. 
I think at a high level, there are some best practices that you should keep in mind when promoting carousel ads. I'm not going to go through all of them today because of our time constraints, but these are just some of the best practices to help you guide your carousel strategy. So things like plan carousel content based on your objective. Try to get the word out about your brand, you know, telling your brand story, sharing insights to position yourself as thought leaders. Or if you're generating leads, showcase your products or opportunities, like maybe an event to compel your audience to then take action. Um, we also need to ensure that you understand the metrics um, that matter most before you launch your campaign. So consider things like if it's for brand awareness and consideration, you would measure impressions and engagement rates. If it's to drive traffic, you would measure click-through rates or for demand gen, conversion rates and leads. Uh, another two helpful best practices would be Try and feature really strong visuals to capture attention. You know, in all the examples I'm going to show you, we see that the visuals are very eye-catching. They draw the attention of the audience. Um, we also recommend A-B testing, so test a number of cards. And I'd also recommend even testing the order of your cards and just really um, creating multiple examples to test what works best. Then looking at some of the Carousel ads features. So with Carousel for sponsored content, you get the same sponsored content you know and love with Carousel, or we hope you know and love. <laughs> so this means that you can easily upload content into Campaign Manager and then promote the Carousel content in the LinkedIn newsfeed across desktop and mobile. So needless to say, we will also provide Carousel metrics for your Carousel ads to help you improve your ROI from your carousel ad spend. And then um, there are two ways that you can use carousel ads. When members click on your ads, the two options are, if we look at the next slide, number one, to drive traffic to your website or the multiple landing pages. Or number two, if you're collecting leads, you can also generate leads with the pre-filled lead gen forms, which I'll discuss further in a minute. On the next slide, you're going to see um, this is just the standard carousel ad. But if we look at how the lead gen works, um, when you use a lead gen form, you'll see in this image that the member will first see the carousel ad in their feed. When they click on the call to action button, the form will then appear. And from there, they can see the company privacy policy and click the opt-in checkbox to agree and submit their data. This is obviously GDPR compliant, which is very important. Um, and then once they click, click submit, they'll then see the confirmation page. So that's just to show you the simple steps of how the lead gen form would work. Carousel ads also appear in the feed differently depending on um, where you're driving your audience. So in this example, on the left, this is a standard carousel that drives to landing pages. So the individual carousel cards will each have an image and a card description. But on the right-hand side, um, this carousel links to, is what it would look like when it links to a lead gen form. So the individual cards are the same as the standard carousel, but there's also a call to action button available on each card that you can see in the example there. Um, just important to note that this is only available when using the lead gen form. The, the call to action button is only available when using the lead gen form. And then moving on, um, the overall carousel ad unit is built like sponsored content. So there are two main parts. The first, the intro text or description, is underneath the company name and logo. So like sponsored content, this should be no more than 150 characters. And then below is the creative portion of the ad. So in this case, rather than a single image, there's a horizontal carousel of multiple slides in succession. And you'll see this when I show you the examples. Um, carousel ads require at least two cards, and we may not have more than 10. So these are the parameters we need to work with for now. 
And then looking at the anatomy of the carousel ad, so on each individual card, there are also two main parts. First is the image. I'm not going to read out all the specs, and we will send you these specs um, in a separate doc document. But I think the nice thing to note is that the image spec is the same as Facebook, so that makes it really convenient. Second is the description on each card underneath the image. Um, this is slightly different than your standard sponsored content. This is separate from the intro text at the top of the made ad unit. And the card description can be up to two lines long. So for standard carousel, there's a 45 character limit. And then carousels with lead gen, the limit is 30 characters. And this is due to the call to action button. So um, like the lead gen forms today, you may already know that there's seven pre-filled call to action options. Unfortunately, they're not customizable at the moment, but I also just want to say we strongly recommend that you don't use more than three to four fields. We just find that if you use all seven, it's just too many for the user to sit and fill in. So we recommend a max of three or four fields. And then just looking at the pricing, so carousel ads are available on both a CPM and a CPC pricing model. For CPC, any click to a unique landing page is, is billable, but just important to note that scrolling does not count as a click, so you won't be billed for users scrolling. And then I'm going to just move to some live examples. Um, Marius, let me share my, my screen. Great. You all see this. Wonderful. So the first, I just have three to showcase, and we actually have an amazing list of many different examples that we'll also share with you, but these were a few that I enjoyed. So the first is HP. You'll see they are showcasing a beautiful soccer venue, um, just using intro text that really encourages the user to swipe. So as you can see at the bottom here, it says swipe to see Tottenham's new home, and as you swipe, there are these beautiful images of the stadium. So you can see that they've used cards there. The second is from uh, Renault. It was actually a campaign that was run in France, and it showcases the beautiful cars. You can't go wrong with these pretty images of cars. Um, as you can see, they've used a few images of cars, and then the last one is just a description on the cars. And then lastly, I just want to show you the KLM example. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I think that they've used a very creative way um, where they've used a baggage conveyor belt uh, showcasing these beautiful pictures of destinations. Uh, as you can see, very effective images. And this was to promote a 60% early bird business class deal. So again, quite clever um, imagery promoting a nice deal to a particular target market. So these were just the three examples. As I said, we'll send you a few more. But this is it for the carousel ads. So just to wrap up the session, I think that there are three things I want to highlight. The main key message is, I think one of the most important takeaways from this webinar is to focus on the objective. So What's the objective of the conversation, the meeting, or the engagement? And to really ask yourselves that question first. And then going into video and carousel, I think the highlights for video, as Marius mentioned, when looking at B2B video, we need to look at those three tiers Marius spoke about. The mindset, delivering the right appropriate content, um, testing content as well earning trust and credibility, and then knowing your audience and targeting the right audience. And then for Carousel, the key takeaway is about telling a rich and complete story. So using strong images to really compel the user to engage and ultimately convert, both telling 
stories in different ways. And I think this is a huge opportunity for many of our brands to really engage in a very um, unique and compelling way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, I think that sort of uh, wraps up the session. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Um, Sammy, can you stop sharing your screen? I think uh, we don't need to share it anymore. But um, yeah, it's been a, a pleasure hosting. I'd like to open open the floor for questions if anybody's got them. You can either come directly straight out and say it, even show your own video, um, or you can just pop them into that chat room and ask uh, Morris and Sam some questions that might be more relevant to you personally right now. Um, but overall, very excited about these these products, and without a doubt, we're going to see a lot of use of them, particularly in the um, in the African region. So, uh, looking forward to seeing um, some award-winning stuff that goes on in the space. Um, from our side, we it's really been a great pleasure hosting you. Um, do we have any questions? Ah, we have a question. Is the last card dedicated to a profile picture as it is on a Facebook carousel? So no, um, all of the cards are uniquely customizable. So you can choose what you want in each card. It doesn't have to be a profile picture. We generally recommend that the last card should though be, a, be a, some sort of wrap up either around the conversation or what are the next steps that you would like the user to take? Pleasure. Pleasure on that one. Any more questions? Um, what when will this be rolled out? So the questions, I think we are. Morris, do you want to just um, explain how we're going to send out the link for this session? Because I'm sure you've got colleagues out there that people would want to share the webinar with. Sure. So after this session, we'll send you the recording for this, um, as well as the, the presentation and the slides. All of this will be in a point drive video where we have also loaded up all of our previous webinars. So if you want to find out about B2B marketing trends, you want to find out about blockbuster marketing by a gentleman called John Lombardo, or you want to find out about content marketing, um, with Jamie Pam, who's a content evangelist for uh, for LinkedIn. All of those will be in exactly the same space. So you can go, it'll be right after this today, and you can go and you can engage on all of the different content. And then also just to say, if you think of any questions that you didn't have a chance to ask, please reach out to us. You can email any of us and we will happily assist with answering any of your questions. Yeah, just on that point, I think our contact details are in that point drive link where, that Morris is going to be sending. So please feel free to contact us, call us, and we'll be, um, be able to respond immediately. Yeah, so from my side, big thank you. Um, and I'm sure, Morris, you'd like to close it up. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. We uh, really appreciate the time. Um, if you have any questions, reach out and we look forward to the next webinar. We, um, if you have any recommendations around topics that you also want to see, please drop us a note. We're also happy to do individualized, customized training to your particular business. Thank you.